Friends, if you have your Bibles, John chapter 4. This is the story of the Samaritan woman. I will read and explain. In case you don't, you can follow the screen as we normally do. Jesus talking to a Samaritan woman. This is John chapter 4. King James. There comes, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me a drink. Notice, Jesus says to her, she doesn't offer water. He asked her for a drink. You remember the second time Jesus was thirsty? At the cross, I thirst. So here is his human side showing. Verse 8. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Wait a minute. Why did Jesus send away his disciples? It's a valid question. Why did you send away your disciples when you are meeting with a Samaritan woman? Think about it. Then say the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you being a Jew, ask drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Does it become a little clear? Disciples are Jews. The woman is a Samaritan. Jesus had to move them out of the way or else they would interrupt and interfere with this conversation. You understand? Sometimes you bring your prejudices to a conversation. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who said to thee, Give me a drink, you would have asked of him. And he would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence thou hast that living water. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. Do you know whom Jesus said this to? Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes asking, what can I do to be born again? Jesus tells him, wait a minute, Nicodemus. You are a teacher in the synagogue, Sanhedrin. You don't know all these things. So Jesus is wondering, how come you are asking this question? <laughs> Sitting at the well, the woman says, Are you greater than our father Jacob? which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Hold it right there. You know, the well at which Jesus was sitting was called Jacob's well. So the woman is saying, are you greater than Jacob? See, Jacob gave water to cattle and to people. Understand? Jesus is sitting at Jacob's well. Who created Jacob's well? Jacob himself. This was made centuries ago. Now, Jacob's well, Jesus is sitting. And the woman is saying, are you greater than him? Jesus answered and said, whoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. That means Jacob's well. The water Jacob's, Jacob gives you, you will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water I shall give him shall never thirst. The water shall I shall give him shall be in him a well of spring, of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So you understand the difference between Jacob's water and Jesus' water. Jacob's water you have, you will thirst again. Jesus' water you have, you won't thirst again. The woman answered and said, Jesus said, verse 16, Go call your husband and come here. Woman said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, You have well said, I have no husbands, for you have had five husbands. And he whom you now have is not your husband. You said the truth. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. She's a Samaritan. Samaritans worshipped in Mount Gerizim or Jerizim. Why? They believed. When Abraham sacrificed his son, was offering his son for sacrifice. Remember he took Isaac up to the mountain? It was Mount Moriah. Samaritans believed, no, it was Mount Gerizim. So observe her words. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jews believed the holy place is Jerusalem. Mount Moriah, they believe the holy place is Mount Gerizim, different from what the Jews believe. So you see the clash, the clash between Jews and Samaritans. That's why Jesus told his disciples, go, or else you'd have thoroughly interfered with that conversation. Why he had to remove them? Verse 21, Jesus said, woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the father. You worship, you know not what. 
we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now he's trying to push her. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. So what he is trying to say is, true worship is not just for the Jews in Jerusalem. It's for everybody. You get it? He's taking the conversation and making it equal. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah comes, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Wait a minute. You are facing the Messiah and you don't know. Samaritan, looking at the Messiah straight in his face and saying, I know he will come. So you are not aware Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto you am he. Brilliant, no? <laughs> Upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked to the woman. Now you understand. Now your disciples land up and now you are surprised he's talking to the woman. Why? When Jesus was with the woman caught in adultery, no? then you never marveled. Everybody left, he was alone, you remember? Then you never marveled. Now you are marveling, why she is a Samaritan? You get it? See that hatred Jews have for Samaritans. It, it was there for centuries. They marveled. <laughs> but what kind of disciples are these? Yet no man said, what seekest thou or why do you talk to her? He didn't have the guts. <laughs> Woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city. And then all of this, is this not Christ? Now, question I'm going to ask is, do I fit in or do I stand out? The thing about Jesus is, we understand Jesus through what the West has taught us. If you look at Google, very good looking, fair, sharp features, like good nose, handsome looking, no, Jesus. It's all what the West has created for us. Kind, good looking, compassionate, sweet, humble, all that. all that is nice. But Jesus was very confrontational. He would let you have it. Outspoken, directly like, you brood of vipers, you hypocrites. Remember, directly told him. Who did he tell? Church people. You are like whitewashed tombs, white on the outside, inside full of filth. <laughs> so Jesus, if there's one word to describe him, he was radical. Oh, very radical. So he started his ministry in the synagogue, in the temple, didn't stay there, went out to the streets where the need was. Who were his friends? Harlots, sinners, wine bibbers. Jesus, very, very radical. And anytime you are radical, you will be controversial. Anytime you are radical, you will not fit in. Anytime you are radical, you will not be accepted. You agree with this? You know, I think if Jesus was alive today, we wouldn't have allowed him membership in churches. Not just Baptists, anywhere. Look at church membership. It is easier to enter heaven than enter a church. These many do's, don'ts, do's, don'ts, oh my goodness. Uh, you can never fit in. You have to look like us, talk like us, dress like us, you know, bow our heads like us and sing like us, smile like us or else we won't accept you. These are all man-made rules. Jesus would let us have it. Church membership is based on that. Am I right? Go with the crowd. Jesus never fit in. Look. Controversial. Did not fit in. He would not be accepted. Now. There was a promise given to Abraham. Which this woman was referring to. Remember Abraham takes Isaac to the mountain to sacrifice. God says stop. This is what is said in Genesis 22. Because you have done this thing. And have not withheld your son, your only son, only begotten son. In blessing I will bless thee. Look at verse 18. In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Ah, not just Jews, everyone. So, Jesus is the promise of Abraham. Second, he is the seed of Abraham. Keep that in mind. What does it mean? God's grace. Not just for Jews. Everyone. Not just for circular road, for everyone on the streets. God's grace is for everyone. So when you make all these rules, please remember, God's grace applies for everyone. Jesus is that seed. This woman is trying to say, this refers to our forefathers, Jacob and all of that. No, no, no. Jesus is that promise. She is seeing him face to face. Do you get the logic now? 
the trouble is no jews and samaritans had a history of enmity history of fighting forever remember king solomon he asked god for wisdom god gave him wisdom started very well as a king soon the fellow started his tricks 40 years he was king married 300 wives 700 concubines total is 1000 god never approved that behavior excuse me mr solomon now you are going off track that's when the trouble started all these women never believed jehovah so he built altars for idols for them that's when god really got upset solomon my friend don't think you can do what you want this is what god tells him jesus says i must go through samaria fine let me explain the split came into the northern and southern kingdom at the end of Solomon's reign. Northern kingdom is called Israel. Southern kingdom is called Judah. Israel, Ephraim, same thing. The capital of the northern kingdom, remember this, Samaria. Capital of the southern kingdom, Jerusalem. Fine. End of Solomon's reign, there is a split, northern, southern. Capital of northern kingdom is Samaria. Capital of southern kingdom, Jerusalem. Now, this is what God tells Solomon with what he was doing with the idols. They do all kinds of detestable things the Lord hates. 1 Kings, the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude, you have not kept my covenant and my decrees which I commanded you. I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. Trouble has started, my friend Solomon. The kingdom divided into northern and southern. Now the drama begins. There's a character called Jeroboam. He comes into the scene. See, Jeroboam is just a, like a manual laborer in Solomon's kingdom. Solomon saw he's very good at his work. Let me give him a promotion. See, this is the mistake you make. Let me show 1 Kings. Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, made him ruler over the house of Joseph. Wait a minute, Solomon. Be very careful. You are a very good director of an NGO in the city. Let's make him pastor. Please don't make that mistake. It's a different calling. You are excellent in your work in the corporate. Let's make you a deacon. No, excuse me, don't. It's all different callings. That is an organization. This is an organism. You know the difference? In living, this is living. This is founded on these principles. A deacon's role, a pastor's role is a calling. Organizational roles are man-made rules, not written from here. Don't ever make this mistake. Solomon made this mistake. Jeroboam, let me make you boss. This fellow was just a servant, became king. That's when the trouble starts. Drama begins now. See? Northern kingdom goes into whose hands? Look right down. Jeroboam. Oh, just a manual laborer goes into your hands. Southern kingdom goes into whose hands? This is Solomon's own son, Rehoboam. Oh, now begins the drama. God said, I'll wait till you die because God loved his father, David. A man after my own heart. He spared him, no? Drama began when he died. Kingdom divided, north, south. One servant guy becomes king. 20 years, 20 years he ruled Israel. No, not a small time. Not a short time. 20 years. Rehoboam, another character. When Rehoboam became king, no? the people said, see, your father Solomon taxed us heavily. Please reduce the tax burden. A valid request. The taxes we still die under even today. That's why people go to Middle East. No tax. Rehoboam was asked, please reduce our tax burden. He didn't answer. Let me consult with my board members, like deacon's board. Went to the elders. Elders said, yes, you must reduce the tax burden. They, they've seen life more than this young blighter. Please reduce the tax burden. Your father made life miserable for your common man. Reduce it. Went to the young people. 
He said, make their lives miserable. Oh, who do you think Rehoboam took? Young people's side. That's when fights began, Jews and Samaritans. Look at what it says about Jeroboam. The Israelites persisted in all the sins of Jeroboam and did not turn away from them. He built a temple dedicated to God Jehovah. In that he put idols. Imagine God's anger on these characters. Be very careful. Shankar, you are doing gardening very well. Let's make you deacon. Oops, <laughs> don't make those mistakes. Different calling. Don't make those mistakes. It's a calling, my friends. Second Chronicles, this is the warning God gives to Jeroboam. Watch very carefully how angry God is. If you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands I have given you, go off to serve other gods and worship them. Then I will uproot Israel from my land which I have given them. I will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. I will make it a byword and an object of ridicule among all people. Oh, God is mighty angry. The temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will be appalled and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land, to this temple? People will answer because they have forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt and have, look at that, embraced other gods, worshipping and serving them. That is why he brought all this disaster on them. Now, President of the United States, second president, Brilliant words. It would be impossible to govern rightly without God and the Bible. Interesting, no? The president of a nation should say that the country should be founded on God's words. Harry Truman, 33rd president. The fundamental basis of this nation's laws was given to Moses on the mount. If we don't have a proper fundamental moral background, we will end up with a totalitarian government which does not believe in rights and whatever. See, the point is, my friends, you don't found your church or your cities and countries on God's word. You're asking for trouble. If you look at Joe Biden today, president of the US, everyone's making fun of him. Hang on. Who put him there? Who put him? The people put him there. Who put your leaders in Calcutta today? We. Why are you making fun of them? He is characteristic of a nation that cannot find its way anymore. He cannot even find his way to the podium. Have you observed? Cannot find his way to the mic. Someone has to take him and then he'll go somewhere else. A nation has lost its way. That is Joe Biden today. And you're making fun of him. Wait a minute. You have put him there. What are you making fun of? And so begins the enmity between Jews and Samaritans. Northern Kingdom, remember, taken over by whom? Jeroboam. Capital is Samaria, southern kingdom taken over by whom? Solomon's son, Rehoboam, capital being Jerusalem. Right, now, they have a fight. Ten tribes move away for the, to the north. Right, I'm not reading these. Just keep this in mind. Ten tribes move away to the northern kingdom. Two tribes remain in the southern kingdom. Where does Jesus come from? Southern kingdom, he is the lion of Judah. Get the beauty. Let's explain. 721 Assyrians. Assyrians were those from Nineveh. Remember Jonah sent to Nineveh? Bloodthirsty scoundrels. Worst of the worst. They will skin you alive. Assyrians took over the northern kingdom. They brought some outsiders. They intermarried with the Jews in the northern kingdom. They began to be called Samaritans. Now, when you marry outsiders, you will develop their habits. So the Samaritans developed their habits. Foreigners, Babylonians took over Jerusalem. Fine. This is how the fight between Jews and Samaritans started. You see, we, we've been fighting about everything. Think about it. Forget Jews and Samaritans. Look at churches. How dark, how tall, how thin, how fat. Who's given how much money and you know, oh, we fight about everything. Who is right wing, who is left wing, who is right, who is wrong. You know, one uh, teacher in Africa talking about right and left. I want to show you this. It's absolutely hilarious. School teacher in Africa drew this on the blackboard. I'm talking about right and left wing, right? 
He said a woman's brain is like this. He drew a circle with a hemisphere. Is divided into left and right. A woman's brain is like this hemisphere. On the left, there is nothing right. On the right, there is nothing left. Brilliant, huh? Apologies, woman. It was Women's Day, I understand. <laughs> fighting, fighting about everything. Quickly, look, Samaritans and Jews. Look at the many, many differences. So Samaritans, remnant of the northern kingdom. Jews, remnants of the southern kingdom. Samaritans, small. They exist today. Do you know where it is? If you open the map. West Bank, Israel, Palestine. West Bank is where Samaria is today. They are around less than 1,000 today in number. Jews, no, millions. Samaritans, point number three, have one level of religious belief. Jews, many levels. Four, Samaritans only live in Samaria today. Jews scattered all over the world. Number five, child of the father, patrilineal lineage, Jews believe, matrilineal lineage. Number six, Mount Gerizim is their center of worship, I told you. For the Jews, Jerusalem. For some reason, they believed Abraham sacrificed at Mount Gerizim. So they don't believe Jerusalem is the center. Therefore, point number seven, you know the Muslims face Mecca during prayers? Samaritans will make their fa prayers facing Mount Gerizim. Look how interesting. Jews, oh, Jerusalem, point seven. Point eight, Torah. Do you know what's the Torah? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. First five books. Torah is their holy scripture. But for the Jews, the entire Old Testament is their holy scripture. Which means Samaritans don't follow anything apart from the first five books. Oh, you got to be careful. Even worse, point number nine. Samaritans have their own Torah. Now you're asking for trouble. Point number nine, Jewish people have their own Torah. Ten, Torah is Hebrew script. Ten, Torah uses different script for the Jews. Remember, taken over by Babylonians, southern kingdom, Babylonian scripts. Point number eleven, authority of Torah is the Levites. Authority of Torah is who? Rabbis. Remember, Pharisees kept attacking Jesus. All rabbis, rabbis. Point number twelve. Scripture has the altar built at Mount Gerizim. Point number 12. Scripture has the altar built at Mount Ebal. 13. The Messiah will come from the sons of Joseph or Levi. That is northern kingdom. Ah, Messiah will come from where? Lion of Judah. Southern kingdom. Last four. Their calendar uses lunar solar. Their calendar uses only lunar. We follow 14. The Jewish lunar. Samaritans have a Passover sacrifice. Jews do not have a Passover sacrifice. Samaritans don't eat or drink when fasting. Jews do not only eat when fasting, they drink. Samaritans do not light candles on the Sabbath. Jews light candles. Samaritans do not wear head covers. Jews will wear head covers. If you step outside India, enter Europe, you will see the Jews fully dressed, the men fully black from head to toe. Interesting, isn't it? Remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Why do you think Jesus used those words, Good Samaritan? Think about it. Think. Interesting. Why did he say Good Samaritan? In the mind of the Jew, a Samaritan is not good. He specifically stressed on Good Samaritan. Brilliant conversation. Look, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, what is written in the law? Obviously, he knows the law. He's a Pharisee. He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28. You have answered right. But this man is now getting smart. Who is my neighbor? Jesus said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Why down? Think about it. What do you think? No. No. Jericho is situated below sea level. Jerusalem is higher up. Went down. You get the logic? Went down. And fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. 
This is a fictional story. Jesus made this up to drive home his point. By chance, certain priests came that way. Church people. He is deliberately driving home the points about their hatred. Passed on. Second, the Levite. Who are Levites? Levites are also priests. Are they from the northern and southern? Yes, from both. Levite comes. Passed by. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And he had compassion on him. You know why he is emphasizing this? When you talk about a story like this, the Jew will think the Samaritan always robs the Jew. He says, no, the Samaritan came to help. See the, how brilliant. This is the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Look how narrow. Try and understand the geography of this. This is the road today, even today, frequented by military people, army people, merchants, tourists. Okay, military people, trade merchants, tourists. Fine, keep that in mind. So if military people, tourists, trade people are crossing this narrow road, don't you think thieves will attack? Logic, no? If a thief attacks on such a narrow strip, 100% you will block the road if you are fallen flat and robbed. You understand? All sun, there is no shade. You are exposed. Jesus is trying to say the Levite and the, the pastors, the priests, deliberately saw this and ignored. This is how you and me are, my friends. You Jews, he's trying to say, you ignore people's needs. Why Jerusalem to Jericho? Think. Jerusalem is symbolic of everything that is holy, righteous, good. Jericho, sin, debauchery, opposing God. So the man is backsliding and the church will allow you to do it. They will ignore you totally. That is how brilliant the story is, story of the Good Samaritans. So quickly, this is what Moses tells Samaritans. Make no treaty with them. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy comes within the Pentateuch. You know what's the Pentateuch? First five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Penta means five. Moses is warning his Israelites, don't associate with Samaritans. Very strong words. Look, make no treaty, show them no mercy, do not intermarry. Who? Jews don't marry Samaritans. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons, for they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. You see that hatred. That hatred was there for years. It's like Brahmins and you know Dalits today. That's how it is. Blacks and whites. Hatred there for years, my friends. Quickly, let's summarize this as we're running out of time. John chapter 4, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. First, Jesus says, give me a drink. God asks you sometimes what you don't have. She only came with a bucket. She didn't even have water. Why are you asking her water before she has? Think about it. Think. Sometimes God will ask you what you don't have. He wants to push you. Remember Elijah tells that widow, Go make some food for me first, then for you. What do you mean? She's going to die. Can you prioritize God first? That is the point. Can you prioritize God first? Second, his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. I asked you why. God moved them out of the way. God will remove people from your life and mine. Because sometimes they can interfere with God's working in your life. Don't get upset. Say thank you. They will cause havoc if they stay. They hated Samaritans. All Jews, 12 of them, go away, get meat. If you read, when they bring meat, Jesus doesn't want to eat. He's not hungry. It was just drama. He just sent them. <laughs> read the rest of the verses. Sometimes God removes people so that he can work in your life. Never question God. Lastly, Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, a woman says. Please remember, my friends, grace is for everyone, not just church members. God will use people you don't like to bless you. 
Jesus Christ was a Jew, right? The democracy you follow in the world is Greek. The coffee you and I, you and I have is Brazilian. The words you write, Arabic. The numbers we use are Roman. Mm -hmm. The cars you drive, Japanese or Korean. Hardly Indian cars. The shirt you will wear is Hawaiian. Kolkata people love Korean food and they love Chinese food for years. And when you go for a holiday from here, you will go to Singapore and Malaysia and Bangkok, all these places. No? Why can't your neighbor be a non-nationality of yours? Why not? Why can't they be different? We don't accept. We are a very intolerant people. How many of you have neighbors in your places who are different from you? Hardly. Hardly. <laughs> You will all have neighbors from the same region, same nationality, my friends. <laughs> That's why when some people attend church coming from outside, you know, not, not Baptists, please accept them. They've crossed over various hurdles to get here. You don't know the crosses they are carrying to join your church. Please be accepting God's graces for everyone, for the Jew, for the Greek, for everyone. In Christ, we are all one. You believe that? God's grace for everyone, my friends. God is trying desperately to reach out to us. Let me close with this. A man was sitting in a barber shop, very well dressed man, with a suit and all, went for a haircut and a shave. At the barber shop, the barber tells him, God doesn't exist. So much suffering and pain in the world. Children getting kidnapped, women getting raped. God does not exist. Man didn't respond. Some, sometimes you want to sit quietly you know, in the barber shop. He left, well-dressed man, stepped out of the barber shop and uh, outside he sees a man with long hair, you know, up to his uh, shoulder length and beard uncut for years. Oh, good Lord. He went back into the barber shop. He said, excuse me, barbers don't exist. So what do you mean barbers don't exist? He said, look, the guy hasn't cut his hair in years, hasn't had a shave in years. Barbers don't exist. So now what do you mean babas don't exist? I am right here. He doesn't come to me. He said, exactly. We don't go to God. He is longing for us to draw near to him. We don't go to him. That is why, my friends, Jesus meets us at our point of need. The woman at the well. He met her at the point of need. No matter how miserable you are. This morning, may I close with this. Allow God to meet you at your point of need. No matter how heavy your cross. Allow him to meet you at your point of need. He is longing desperately. Shall we bow our heads? Close in prayer. Father, this morning, what a joy to see a Jesus who steps over boundaries, who steps over hatreds and divisions and looks at what can bring people together. Thirst, water, something the rich, the poor, the middle class, all of us needs. The man in him thirsted for water. But the God in him gave her water that she would never thirst again. And she ran out to testify. Father, may we be willing to run out and testify. For great is your faithfulness as we sung today. Your goodness to us is beyond measure. Something we cannot measure that we take for granted. And Father, no matter how far we go away from you, you are pursuing us to draw us closer to you, to your heart. May we be like David, a man and a woman after your own heart pursuing you no matter how deep and dark our difficult times. May we run after you because in you there is abundance of life. In you there is fullness. Thank you once again, Father, even as we go back home for this, the rest of these six days during this week. Remind us that your grace is sufficient in all our fallenness. For your strength is made perfect in weakness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, as we close, uh, shall we sing a hymn we haven't sung in a while? It's a hymn about the cross. Uh, shall we stand and close?
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Have a good week and stay safe. God bless.